What is a castle? Worldwide, castles have had many purposes and meanings. Castles may be powerfully symbolic of sovereignty in the prevailing social order, coveted possessions of strategic and political importance. They may be places of attack, defence and vigilance, places of imprisonment, but conversely also of protection, sanctuary and refuge. Castles feature strongly in the collective imagination in stories from around the world. A key part of fairy tales or horror films, they can assume almost the nature of a character in their own right. Where would Dracula or the Sleeping Beauty be without their castles? An image of a ruined castle is just as evocative as that of one impregnable and whole. A ruined castle raises questions about the processes of ruin. What may appear strong and eternal may in fact be easily obliterated. Ruins may appear historic, romantic or tragic as they crumble away into the surrounding landscape. A castle may be rebuilt and repurposed many times over. The castle we were standing in now was both a royal palace and a prison before becoming a museum. The starting point for exploration of this theme is this majestic painting which has been loaned to Norwich Castle from the National Gallery, available to view 17th of May to the 4th of July 2021. It is the fortress of Königstein from the north, painted by Bernardo Bellotto in 1756 to 58. Königstein was first built in the 13th century and rebuilt in the 16th. It lies about 25 miles southeast of Dresden in present day Germany and still exists today. A stronghold of the historic rulers of Saxony, like Norwich Castle, it was at one point used as a state prison. In fact, it was known as the Bastille of Saxony and was never conquered. Bellotto's painting emphasises this strength. It appears almost as if it has been hewn directly out of rock. He's positioned it at such an angle that it dwarfs all the people in the painting. We viewers are also forced to look up towards it. Again, like our castle, it is now a museum. You can learn much more detail about this painting in our other films on YouTube, Talking Objects and in the Picture. In this talk, I want to explore other works, many from our own collections, which illustrate some of the intriguing qualities which castles, real or imaginary, may possess. This tranquil scene by William Henry Crome, although a picture very different in intention to Bellotto's Fortress of Königstein, in its way makes a similar point about a castle's visual and symbolic impact. Norwich Castle looms large in this landscape, visible from several miles away. The cathedral is also clearly visible. If the cathedral represents the church, the castle is the state. Both these buildings, having existed since the 11th century CE, were ever-present reminders of these twin forces, which between them completely ruled ordinary people's lives. Crome probably did not intend his work to make a statement about power. Nonetheless, it is a clear reminder of how dominant a presence such buildings had when they were so much larger than everything else. Today, when the area is built up, the impact is far less obvious, but people in the past had these buildings constantly in their field of vision, reminding them of their place in the social hierarchy. Quite apart from a symbolic value, castles served a very practical purpose and were built for their defensive strength. While on a trip to North Yorkshire during 1803 to 1805, John Sell Cotman produced some notable watercolours. The sites he chose included several castles, including this one, although the identity of the building is today unknown. However, it demonstrates clearly how the boundaries between a castle and a fortified house were often blurred. For obvious reasons, these have always been particularly numerous in the border regions. While England and Scotland were enemies before 1603 when James I succeeded Elizabeth I, the Northern English had serious fears of attacks from the Scots, so many fortified their homes along these lines. During the Civil War, castles which had fallen out of defensive use were used again. Yorkshire played a significant role in this war. Charles I had moved his court to York in 1642, and much of the county was strongly royalist. Today, the most common state in which to see a castle is as a ruin. Many artists have been attracted to the romantic vision of a ruined castle within dramatic natural surroundings. Sometimes so little of the building remains that the stones may seem to dissolve almost entirely into the landscape. The remains may leave few signs of their former identity, but still inspire thoughts about their past history. These processes of ruin may of course happen in different ways. It could be natural or deliberate, gradual or brutally sudden. 
In the Romantic period of the early 19th century, artists usually focused on ruins' aesthetic qualities to add a picturesque or pensive atmosphere to a landscape. Turner produced some of the most famous examples, but many other artists, including Cotman and others of the Norwich School, were inspired by ruined monuments in Norfolk and further afield. John Burney Crome's portrayal of Borough Castle, with Braden Water in the background, has a mellow, peaceful air. Two men enjoy a conversation, one sitting casually by the wall, but as if it is so familiar it is scarcely noticed. Borough Castle was once an important Roman cavalry fort, built in the 3rd century CE for coastal defence. Its strategic position on the Waveney estuary meant it was also used by the Normans. Today it is in the care of Norfolk Archaeological Trust. One of the best preserved Roman monuments of its type, the distinctive brickwork of its walls and towers is clearly visible in this picture. Crome, if he knew of the fort's history, was probably less interested in this aspect than he was in the romantic idea of a relic surviving from ancient times. Here, Cotman portrays a Norfolk ruin with a very different atmosphere. This is the remains of the 12th century St Michael's Chapel, overlooking Norwich on the hill known as Ket's Heights. It is named for Robert Ket, a yeoman farmer from Wyndham. He led a rebellion in 1549, protesting against growing hardships caused by land enclosures and rent increases imposed by landowners. Ket gathered a following of thousands from around Norfolk. From their camp on Mousehold Heath, they sent a list of demands for just treatment for the poor to King Edward VI. This was refused, so the rebels attacked Norwich from this vantage point here at Ket's Heights, just outside the city. Their attempt failed and Ket was hanged from the battlements of Norwich Castle. Ket always maintained staunch loyalty to the Crown and said he sought only social justice. He's unlikely to have referred to his own encampment as a castle, but the title commemorates the short-lived stronghold of this unofficial but important Norfolk leader. The sombre colours of this watercolour and the stark bleakness of the ruined stones capture some of the sadness of Ket's story. The castles become ruins for many reasons. Victorious leaders may choose to take a castle for themselves or raise it to the ground to wipe out all traces of the previous owners, their nation or culture. Contemporary artist Walid Siti's castles and towers call to mind the latter type, particularly that of vulnerable historic or sacred buildings subject to the aggression of regimes which deliberately destroyed them, as happened most recently in the artist's native Iraqi Kurdistan. Siti's works, both paintings and sculptures, closely reference the geometric traditions of Islamic art, but also resemble the Tower of Babel, being simultaneously built and demolished. One of Siti's other main influences is the iconic ziggurat of the famous spiral minaret of Samara, one of the most magnificent works of ancient architecture in existence. Built in the 9th century CE, this minaret still stands but has been damaged by both American and Iraqi troops during recent conflicts after being used temporarily as a military base. Soldier figures proliferate relentlessly around and through Siti's towers, dominating the structures until they are gradually engulfed. The artist shows how easily irreplaceable heritage may be obliterated. Worldwide, castles inspire stories. The design of these buildings, ruined or whole, engage the imaginations of artists and writers. This painting illustrates a poem written in 1852 by Robert Browning. It describes Roland's quest through a barren, nightmarish landscape to reach a mysterious tower. The story of a hero's quest is a ubiquitous theme, but usually the quest has a purpose. To rescue a princess, slay a dragon or seek the Holy Grail. In Browning's poem, the reason for the quest is unknown. We never find out what awaits Roland in the Dark Tower. It is thought the poet may have intended to portray a psychological journey in which Roland faces his deepest fears. Here, Roland's climb up the narrow, treacherously steep track emphasises the perils he faces. We glimpse the castle in the far distance, elusively placed so we cannot see if there is any way to cross the ravine to reach it. Nonetheless, there is a flag flying from the battlements which adds to its mystery. It is inhabited, but by whom or what? This ambiguity reflects the enigmatic nature of the original poem. In traditional stories, quests are almost always undertaken by men. In this dramatic interpretation of Saint George and the Dragon by Gustave Moreau from the National Gallery, the princess, praying high on a rock, seems at one with her turreted castle. 
Their airy serenity and pale colour palette contrast with the fierce activity and more vivid colours of George's battle with the dragon. The princess is as poised as a statue, literally and metaphorically on a pedestal. As a saint, George is portrayed as a figure of spiritual purity, whose battle with the dragon symbolises the vanquishing of crude appetites, so this princess is shown as an object of veneration, not earthly lust. Nonetheless, her ethereal stillness reminds a viewer of the passivity of a woman's role in such a story, and the fact that the princess and castle alike may become rewards for a victor. Jaden's model castle suggests a different theme. 13-year-old Jaden created his model of Norwich Castle as part of a young people's art project run by the castle's learning department. His interpretation of the building is simple but effective. He has captured its solid, enduring qualities, also summed up by its nickname, the Square Box on the Hill. This plain format suggests the idea of a castle as a container, a box, ready to be filled with stories and people. It also may remind us that these walls may hide secrets of all kinds and be interpreted as the viewer wishes. Castles may be transformed, whether in reality or our imaginations, and have different meanings projected onto them. The Alhambra in southern Spain, here portrayed by Cotman, has undergone dramatic changes of identity. Cotman never visited himself, but was inspired by the sketches of his pupil, James Bulwer, who had travelled there. In the 1820s, Spain was beginning to be a destination for artists, attracted by its stunning scenery. Initially built by the Muslim rulers of Granada, this palace and fortress became a Christian royal court when the Catholic monarchs of Spain, Ferdinand and Isabella, captured Granada in 1492. As a symbol of their conquest, they altered the palace significantly. Subsequent rulers adapted and rebuilt it. Napoleon's armies used it as a barracks. After this, the Alhambra was in poor repair. Probably unaware of the details of its history as a symbol of colonial conquest by both Spanish and French forces, Cotman would most likely have appreciated it as a semi-ruined romantic relic. Today, the Alhambra is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, bearing witness to Spain's complex history and mixed Christian-Muslim past. If castles have not been allowed to decay into the landscape, or destroyed in war, many evolve into museums, cultural centres, monuments, much-loved symbols of their locality and its histories. Königstein Fortress and Norwich Castle, along with the Alhambra and many others, have this in common. However, even if transformed entirely, castles retain traces of their past. Norwich Castle Keep is in the process of major redevelopment, soon to reveal more layers of its history. Palace, prison, sanctuary, monument and museum, Norwich exemplifies the many identities and histories, some positive, some very dark, which a castle may contain over the course of a long existence. As well as preserving the buildings themselves, the task of present-day curators, archaeologists and educators is to reveal these histories. Not glossing over the more negative aspects, but putting them into context for present and future visitors. Mm -hmm.